Welcome back to Agent Blueprint. I'm Dave. This I'm Paul. Paul. <laughs> Going to start it off. If you like what you hear and want to know more about it, click the subscribe button. Hit the little bell so you get notifications whenever we do new episodes. Um, gosh, last time we were together, we talked about getting to know you and why you chose Realty One Group Choices as your brokerage and how you go about preparing the agents that are here to succeed. So kind of wanted to go a little bit further on that today. And I mean, we, we were talking not too long ago about what type, what season is it right now? A lot of agents go, well, it's a spring buying season. Mm -hmm. What do you call it? I call it preparation season. Yeah. yeah. So uh, I know that this podcast goes out to people all over the country um, and they have not enjoyed a uh, weather like we have enjoyed this winter uh, and it's not very uh, I'm 61 years old and I don't remember too many winters that were like this one I think I remember one other one me being know? a freeze yeah. baby living in Minnesota yeah. I am digging this winter not oh, gonna lie. been a great winter yeah. we are 68 degrees on Tuesday yeah. you know I mean you, you got to yep. golf in January February yep. and March exactly exactly so yeah it's it's been quite a crazy season but I have a brother-in-law and sister-in-law in, -law in uh, Denver and they're just digging out from seven 17 inches of snow. So guess they what? It's just it. crazy all over the world, as we know. But the, the point that I made with our agents um, in the last week or two is, is that they are just chomping at the bit. They're just like, we should be rolling right now. I've got buyers I'm talking to. I got sellers getting their houses ready. And I'm just, it's such a grind right now. It's so hard. I'm just not getting anybody to do anything. No, buyers are still looking at their searches and their favorite people, but they're not ready to go out yet and things like that, right? Sellers are getting their houses ready, but they they want to go on the market in the spring because that's the best time mm -hmm. to sell and all this kind of stuff. So it's a grind right now. And I know that our agents are just really, really exhausted from the grind, right? So in Minnesota, a year ago right now, we're looking outside at about what, three feet of snow at Probably. least? Probably. If not yeah. more. Yeah. And temperature's probably in the 20s, right? So that's normal for us in March, right? So we're just looking at nice, the sun's a lot warmer right now, so it starts creating some more melt and stuff. Right, right now, we're looking outside at brown. You know, there's no snow, it's dry, it's, it, it's great to have the great weather and everything, but we're assuming that that just because we're having good weather, it makes the buyers and sellers ready to go, okay? It's not, they're not jumping on. It's better than a year ago, but it's still not spring selling season and stuff right there. So I wanna talk about preparation season. What should agents be be doing right now during this grind in, in, in this preparation season? So See, not, let's spend some time I, I want about you that. to actually talk about, because the analogy that you did when you started presenting this a couple of weeks ago, you know, it was, what do you think the marinas are doing right now? Yeah. Love that one. Okay, let's talk about that. I mean, just to yeah. kind of put it into perspective yeah. and, and why agents should actually look at this time of year as that. Because obviously, you know, November, that's business planning. That's, yeah. that's where you're planning for your whole year. And you got the holidays. That's family yeah. time, right? January's yeah. vacation time. Get the hell out of this state yeah. anyways. Um, but so I use the analogy with the agents and I chose, I chose boating and I chose golf because it's my two passions, right? Um, but I talked about what are marinas doing right now to get ready for their big season? What, what are uh, boat dealers doing right now to get ready for their season? What are golf courses doing right now to get ready for their season? So I started it with our agents. It says, okay, so when is the, when are a boat dealership or a marina, you know, saying, okay, this is our prime season. I asked every other agent said, and they said, April, May. I said, exactly. I said, what about golf courses? What's Take away this year when people are golfed every month of the year, but typically when our golf course is looking at their prime season, April, May. I go, okay, realtors, when's their prime season? April, May. Okay, let's talk about boat marinas. What are boat marinas doing right now, right? Boat marinas have got their boats sitting up on blocks. They're getting the, the boats uh, unwinterized so that they're ready for the season. They're getting the shrink wrap taken off of them. Maybe the people wanted the boat cleaned and everything, but they're getting ready to launch them, right? Boat dealers, they had uh, their boat um, show was in January. So that's their best, biggest selling point of the year is that one. Even though people aren't using their boats yet, so they're trying to get the boats out, mm -hmm. right? They took orders on the boats, they're meeting with them, they're closing them up, they're showing them how to work everything, and then they're watching them drive away with their new boat, right? Golf courses, right? 
they're probably doing some painting they're probably doing some cleanup they're planning their systems and processes they're hiring people they're getting their grounds crew ready it's all preparation season why are we not having that same mentality in real estate i don't understand right today is preparation season right now is preparation season it is a grind i know how hard it is on our agents i know that they maybe lost out on a listing or buyers decided oh, we're going to go just sign a new lease and i'm not gonna gonna buy right now and this was transactions that our agents maybe were counting on right but what is that grind was that preparation season what should you be do, doing right now so let's spend our day talking about that today okay so hopefully you did business planning in november if you didn't sh shame on you shame on you if you are not planning for your business then you are not an entrepreneur yep. right true entrepreneurs understand the journey true entrepreneurs love and embrace the journey as true entrepreneurs get to a certain level and and that's where i'm at i have reached a level in my career where all of my my journey and all my hard work has paid off i have a very very successful real estate business i have a very successful brokerage but I can tell you, and I've shared my journey with my agents, with David, and with the rest of my staff and everything, I shared the stories of how we were behind on our mortgage payment in 2007. Thought we were gonna lose our house. I was behind on my car payment. I thought I was gonna lose my car. I remember Christmas going back to my hometown and having to borrow 20 bucks to my dad so I could put gas in the gas tank so I could get my family home. I remember not having being able to afford Christmas presents for the kids, right? I remember my wife having to work at Minnesota Vikings games and Minnesota Twins games as some additional income to help support the family. So I understand the journey. I understand the and grind, and right? We, we talk about this every episode. This is not an easy business not to at get all. into yep. and succeed at, which is why... I mean, how many? What, what percentage of agents fail in the first two years? They say ninety percent. Yeah, you know, says ninety percent failure in the first. Our, our goal years. with this yeah. podcast is to help you not be that statistic. Right. Absolutely. Unfortunately, they make it too easy to get in real estate. We yeah. know that. We know right? this. it needs to get a lot harder to get into real estate. Maybe you need to have a two-year associate degree or whatever it is, but that's for a different podcast, right? Um, but but. Um, if it's easy to get in, a lot of people think it's easy and all they got to do is just, you know, put a new status on their social media page. They think, I'm a realtor and the phone starts just ringing off the hook. And next thing you know, I'm out, you know, doing millionaire listing Las Vegas or whatever, right? It doesn't work that way, right? We know it's the grind. But the grind is what you appreciate when you reach a pinnacle in your career and a level of success in your career. It's your grind that defines you. It's your grind that uh, has gotten you to this journey. It's the grind that you look back at and you appreciate because that's what a true entrepreneur, a, re yeah. a true entrepreneur that's been successful will tell you. They appreciate their grind and they look back at their grind every single day. Um, so I talk about that. So what is the preparation season right now? What is the grind that you should be going through right now? Okay. It is absolutely about touching your, your database right now. It's, it's all the different ways that you can be touching your database. I have a couple agents that we just had a, a communication with this past week, and these are very good agents. These are consistently top producing agents that we've got, and they've lost listings. They've got buyers that have, have gone back and decided, I'm just gonna lease right now because the interest rates are still too high. They've lost transactions, right? And they're like, I'm doing the same thing I always do and I always have done, um, but I'm just not getting it. All I'm getting is doors closed in my face and stuff like that. And they're frustrated. They're questioning everything, right? The problem is, I guarantee you, they're not doing the same things that they did before. They unequivocally aren't doing it. Or, it's harder or today. they're doing them less. They're doing them less, yeah. It's harder today. It is hard today to become a realtor. And I'm glad. I'm glad because guess what? When it's hard, we weed out the weak, yep. right? Um, think about all those different over the years, you know, and you've got economies that have been strong and economies that have been slow and you've got companies, you know, your Fortune 500 companies that are kicking butt and then all of a sudden they make a mistake and they go away. So, you know, that's part of life. Part of life is purifying. 
part of life is getting rid of the weak and let the strong survive. That's what it is. So this is about how to take you to that level of strength and so that you're able to get there. But um, preparation season, touching your touching your clients right now, right? Hopefully you've adopted touch campaigns of 33 to 45 times a year, okay? What does the touch campaigns look like? It depends what you want them to look mm -hmm. like. Do you enjoy doing events? Then make sure events are part of your touch campaign. You should always have some steady eddy touches that you're doing in there. Once a month market report touches that you're doing, invites to different events that you've got going on. Maybe it's 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 a, it's a uh, article that you've seen in a magazine or newspaper somewhere that you think is very very fitting to to let your people know. Do you do does your database know what's really going on in our market right now? Probably not, right? Well, they, if they're listening to the media, they think they do. They think they, they think they know what's going on. They're reading the head, reaching the headlines. Um, it was interesting with the NAR class action lawsuit. We just had a discussion with our leadership team about the NAR class action lawsuit. They've talked. They talked about. Uh, we we created a new representation disclosure, and we're talking about how is that going and stuff. And and every one of the agents that have presented it so far, their clients knew nothing about yep. the NAR class action lawsuit. And yet we thought that that is oh my god, this is going to kill us. This bad publicity, this bad media that we got is going to hurt us as agents. And and everybody we've talked to so far is clients that didn't even know about it, right? Um, but these touches that you're doing right now is is something that you need to be doing every single day, okay? Some of them are automated, some of them are deliberate, okay? Personal cards, people still love getting personal cards. Uh, market reports. If you got somebody that purchased their house four year, four plus years ago, you should be getting a quarterly CMAs out to them, right? So all these different touches, but this should have all been defined in your business planning back in November. But if it didn't, there's no better time to start than right now. But the first thing you want to touch is, is your, your touch campaigns. You need to be making sure in your touch campaigns. You need to be starting your day the right way. Okay, your day should not be starting at 10 a.m., right? Your day should be starting with a good crisp walk. It could be working out. It could be going to do your daily devotionals, meditation, all those things to get you in that right mindset, right? I always finish my showers in the morning with about 20 to 30 seconds of absolutely freezing cold because I pop out of that shower awake and ready to go. Okay, now I've already been up for a couple hours. I've already got my workout done and everything else. It's crazy, but it's something that works for me. So hopefully you started out your day in the right way and, and you're ready to go to work. Right? Yeah. He's, yeah I'm, I'm, they say, I'm, I'm, not me. Nope, not, <laughs> not, not going to do that. Yeah. All right. The other things you're hopefully you got people set up on buyer searches. All right. Well, let, hold on. Let's let's back up a okay. with the touch campaigns. So I mean, yes, thirty three to forty five touches per year to everybody. Yeah. What do you think should be in some of those touches? I know. I mean, we can set up easily the quickest ones. Holiday campaign. Yeah. I yeah. mean, right there, that's pretty much what 12, 13 touches a year. Yeah, if you just do so, yeah, in, in, in agents are like, well, I don't know what to put in there, okay? So that, that, let's, that, go, that, let's, define, let's go the simple yeah. way, okay? Let's do the simple way. Now, you've got 12 market reports. Once a month, if you've got a decent CRM, you should have a market report option, right? It's set it and forget it. You put them into the CRM, you click the box to set out a market report, it pulls off of their zip code, and it's going to set out a once a month market report, right? Now, how many people look at it? It's a game of numbers, right? It's, again, there's nothing you can do about the fact that 98% of them aren't going to look at it, but 2% do. That 2% could end up being two, three transactions yep, this year. Exactly. So it's all worth it. Game of numbers, right? Um, but you're going to set up market reports, 12 market reports. So there's 12, right? Set Pick 12 holidays, okay? Your Christmas and New Year's, New and, Year's and St. Patty's, Patty's Day's Day is coming up. Yep. Yeah, hey, we're going to think Memorial same. Day. We're thinking green beer, are Fourth of we? July. Yeah. <laughs> so those are just, just, just easy holiday touches. And you can just Google it to get an image. Just Google a St. Patty's Day image. You know, um, and, and and just create touches like that. So simple and, and easy. And a lot of CRMs yep. will actually have that pre-built already. Oh yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So then you got to come up. So you got 24 touches right now, just coming up with those. So you can come up with some other unique touches that you can do. Again, like I said, I love the quarterly CMAs. Um, another one that's fun is pick some goofy holidays: National mm -hmm. Chocolate Chip Cookie Day, National Blueberry Muffin Day, Yesterday or whatever. Was National Pie Day. Yeah. 
And, and, and those are great ones to do social media touches on because you can get some engagement with those. Obviously, you get your likes, comments, and shares on them. Those are always fun to get, you know, to get some engagement. You can maybe grow your database by doing that, right? So it's pretty easy to come up with 33 to 45 touches, right? I do love the events because the events, when you decide to create an event, let's just say you just do two events a year, you're going to touch your sphere four to six times on every single event, okay? You're going to do a save the date. You're going to do a reminder to sign up. You're going to do some last minute check-ins to the ones that haven't signed up officially. Then you're going to have the actual event. Then you're going to do follow-ups afterwards about the people who missed out on the events. So you're easily getting four to six touches with those. So events are really, really important too. So any other events, any um, other so, I mean, touches that I you've do, done that's... Those are pretty much it. And I know that because I do two, maybe three events a year. I do a big, huge, you know, client appreciation barbecue in the summer. I do pies in the in, around Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving yeah. And then I'll throw in one other little get together with different people. You can also do pop buys. Yeah. Which, as a pop touch. buys. Yeah. And, and maybe pop by their business and just drop off, uh, um, uh, cookies or donuts. donuts or something like that that you're dropping off at their business. And you might get introduced to some of their people that are at their business that might be thinking about buying or selling in the next couple of years. So and, great. And not all of your touches yeah. should be that automated touch. You need to have those personalized touches. Yep. And, and if you're setting up a drip campaign for yourself um, or for your clients, and hopefully you are setting up drip campaigns, add into those those campaigns a task for you to do some sort of manual process. Mm-hmm. Whether yes. it be like you talked about doing the, the handwritten yep. notes. Yep. Maybe it's, you know, do a pop by and here's the list of people that you need to do the pop by yep. for. Whatever that is or however that looks to you, just automate it so that you don't have to really think about it when it's coming up yeah but make sure you have those personalized touches in there whether it be sending that note card out maybe it's reaching out on social media maybe it's making that phone call and god forbid somebody pick up a phone <laughs> god forbid yeah um it's interesting you say that because myself personally um for my sphere we don't do automatic touches to them we reached a point that i'm coming from contribution mm-hmm. i'm doing enough events and things like that so I did automated touches over the years as I was growing my business up, but we're at a point now where I, I'm not doing so much of the automated touches. I'm sharing out the automated touches to at least do something. Yep. You have to touch your people. There's so many agents that are out there that are secret agents, and so many agents say, I just don't like to reach out to them. I feel like I'm bothering them and everything else. And it's like, okay, what do they know about? Here's my comeback to that. What do they know about the market right now? Tell me what you think that they know about the market right now. Well, they probably think it's really hot because they're hearing that, you know, prices keep increasing and stuff like that. Exactly. Okay. No inventory, right? Why do we have no inventory? We have no inventory because we have a new construction unbalance. It's been unbalanced new construction since the crash in 07. They have not gotten anywhere up to the new construction inventory that we used to be. There used to be about four and a half to five million new construction houses every year. And we're running, we got as low as about seven, 800,000 mm-hmm. nationally. We're up to about 1.5 million in new construction houses that are happening today. That's where our biggest imbalance is. And that's why we're in, in the biggest situation we're at. We're also into that situation, as everybody knows about the interest rates okay i'm sitting at a house with a 2.29 percent interest rate why I don't on want earth it. would i want to move why would i want to move right but i also am 61 years old and i got a house with stairs so i know at some point it's got to, it's got yep. to change and it's going to change at some point right but those are the messages that your clients want to know and they need to know so you can be doing those and they don't necessarily need to be automated personal cards love 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 personal cards whenever i have somebody that is checking us out uh, they might be checking out a couple different brokerages and stuff like that. They want to learn more about us. I'm always sending out a personal card afterwards to them. And I get a response back every single time. Thank you for the card. That was so nice because they guarantee no other broker they're talking to is going to get a personal card. So love, love, love the personal card. So and, and if you can make it a handwritten personal card, even better. Yeah. And if you have crappy handwriting like me... There's places you can go that will actually duplicate your handwriting, <laughs> you clean it up a little bit, and make it look like it's handwritten. Just saying. Just saying, yeah. I, I, I use that all the time. All my envelopes, I have my own personal font right. that is actually handwritten. Absolutely. My so it's March. If you're just starting to put together your touch campaign, shame on you. This absolutely should have been done in November. And the reason I'm shaming you is because I want you to make sure that you're doing this in November next year. I want you to build a touch campaign. Build your touch campaign of something that you believe in. Build it with something that you will commit to doing. 
if I am unequivocally will not pick up that phone and call somebody, okay, number one is you shouldn't be in real estate, right? But if you decided to be in real estate and I refuse to pick up the phone, there's other ways that you can touch the people. Do it in ways that you will commit to. Yep. Send them videos, send out videos or just messages. Just, just, check, just check in. I had an agent that told me the other day, I'm just like, you've got to send out these personal cards. You were not doing anything else in your business just start with personal cards. She goes, well, I don't even know what to put in there. You put in there, hey, how, how are, you, are you? Hope everything's okay. If I can be of any help, please let me know and put your business card in with it, okay? I guarantee it, at some point in the next 30 to 60 days or so, that person's gonna find out somebody from church, from work, from their family or whatever that says, hey, I'm done renting, I need to go out and buy a house. And they're gonna say, Here's the card. This yep. is the person you got to talk to. And it happens like that. You, you it may happens not think all the time it. like that. Yeah. I mean, I've gotten deals from church. I've gotten deals from my bowling league. Yeah. You know, I mean, different things like that. Just because I'm not that secret agent, I put it out there who I am. I mean, I wear my Realty One Group Choice hat that I have um, bowling every week. Why? Make sure people know. That I'm a realtor, but I'm not in absolutely, their face with it. Absolutely, absolutely. I wear my one gear everywhere. Absolutely. All right. So yep. we talked about the touch campaigns. Yeah. So now you've got a buyer. Yeah. You, you're working got with buyers, buyer. you got auto search set up for your buyers. If you're the typical realtor, you set up an up an auto search and you think that that's going to do set the work for you. And then you're like waiting for them to call you to see if they're ready to go out and look at houses, right? Once in a while, you might send an email saying, hey, um, uh, let's go look at some houses. You know, are you ready and stuff like that? And then they go, oh, I'm sorry, I forgot to tell you. We went to an open house. It was the exact house that we wanted. And we put an offer in on the house and we got the house. But I sure appreciate appreciate you <laughs> setting me up on an auto search. You can go ahead and stop it at this time. Okay. And you're just pissed. You were counting on this buyer. You needed this commission and everything else. Guess what? Go look in the mirror. Okay. You did not earn their business. Okay. What you need to be doing, if you got people set up on auto searches, is you need to be monitoring that search a couple times a week. You need to send them some other properties that are outside of their search parameters, right? People say, well, well, set me up on a search, but you know what? I only want a house with a, with a white picket fence. Okay. If it's got a, if it's got a, a wire fence, I'm not interested. It's got to be a white picket fence. And you're like, Oh my God, this is, this is going to be fun. Right? So you got to be setting up, you set up the auto search parameters. There's other houses, all those parameters go a little farther out, a little difference in price. Start looking at some older units that have been sitting around a little bit. Go get off your butt and go tour some houses, go tour some houses back in the old days. You didn't let the clients pick the houses that they wanted to go take a look at. You chose the houses. If we go back in before MLS became on the internet, happened on the internet, and we all had books um, with the inventory, you were previewing the houses. You set up a, a tours with the people. You were taking them to the properties that were based on their recommendations, right? So you need to be doing that exact same thing. Go preview some houses, right? If they want to be in a particular neighborhood, right? Start a letter writing campaign to that neighborhood and, 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 and phone calls. Start doing some circle prospecting. See if you can find some off-market properties for them. Check out your brokerage, right? Your brokerage just got pocket listings. See what's coming up in pocket listings. Ours is on our internet. Our agents know exactly what's coming up in withheld listings that we've got out there. So you, you need to go find them inventory. So now let's now talk about sellers, right? What should you be doing with your sellers, right? Um, hopefully we talked to our sellers. We knew in the fall time of year that they were going to be selling in the springtime. So knowing sometimes in the markets, springs are a little bit lo longer than other ones, uh, take a little bit longer to happen before other ones. Maybe you're doing uh, um, uh, pictures in the fall time of the year because it's a be the house is just mm -hmm. photographed beautifully in October, right? So you've done some of those pictures, but maybe it's time right now, if you don't get snow on the ground, maybe let's in Minnesota, we're probably got snow coming up yet. This might be a good time to go get some pictures outside of that house right now yep. so at least in the snow comes and we're going to go live when the snow's coming we've got some pictures that look a heck of a lot better than with snow on the ground right and one of my favorite things to do with with every one of my listings is just like my buyers i set them up on that auto email yes i got that i, I, I want to talk about yeah, that yeah, no, yeah and the reason i do it is if i have to have that conversation with them to reduce price because it's not moving i have the ammo they see exactly what's out there and i don't limit it 
quite like I would for doing like a CMA or how I'd actually gauge yeah. the value of the home. I leave it wide open so they can see everything, everything that's on the market. Everything comes in, yeah. And it helps them understand what their competition is. Yeah. Now, I might have given my people a, um, a range on pricing, mm -hmm. right? I sat down and met with them and said, okay, so here, you know, here's the process. You know, I'm going to give you some recommendations on pricing. I'm going to tell you how we're going to market the property. I'm going to give you some ideas how long it's going to take. I'm going to give you a net sheet so you can see what you're going to net out of your property, right? But we're also going to have a to-do list, right? And not everybody gets the to-do list done. Not everybody gets the hmm. to-do list done the right way. Not right? everybody even starts the yeah. to-do to list. In fact, some people should never be allowed to touch a paintbrush, right? <laughs> so um, the bottom line is I want to see what this house looks like when it's completed. I also know that that's probably a couple months from now. What's happened in closings yep. in that last 60 days, 90 days or so? Because all of a sudden you might've been recommending a price of 575 and two houses in a neighborhood sold at 620, okay? And you know your house is better, you're gonna go at 650, right? So you, you need some time to, to figure that out. But just touching your sellers and find out what else do they need? Did they, did they decide to give up the painting on their own and they wanna hire a painter? Here's the painter, right? One of the things I do is I agree to pay for it ahead of time and I get reimbursed at closing time, you know? so. That's one of the services that I provide for people. So I talk about doing that so they don't have to come up with the money right then. Um, do they need any referrals, countertops, flooring, different things like that? Should you be going back in and do another updated uh, to-do list? I've had some uh, sellers that I've done two, three, four different to-do lists because it was such a beast at the beginning. I picked and chose the first step of things they needed to do and then the second stage of things and then the third stage of things. So I might go back and do a new updated um, to-do list for them. Okay, so after you are doing your check-ins with your buyers and sellers, right, um, we want to set up, as Dave said, set up the notifications for new listings that are going to uh, pop in the market. Maybe you're meeting with them in October, November, December. You're getting them to-do lists that they're going to work on over the winter time. going to go on the market in the springtime. They need to see every listing that's going to come in in their market area that, that could could have an effect on pricing. Don't be afraid yep. to take it a step further and actually have them walk through those mm -hmm. houses. Yep, do previews with them, yeah. Because, and the reason I do that is because I want them to know how their home stacks up against that competition. Is the kitchen that we're walking through completely more upgraded than their own? Yeah. Okay, now this is why this is, our price difference is here. You know, different facets of the homes, they have to be able to see it. And just yeah. in pictures, you really can't see it because we all know True real estate photographers are geniuses at editing. Yeah. I mean, how many times do you hear, oh, the house looks a lot better in pictures than it does in person? Yeah. Or vice versa. Yep. Or vice versa, right? So um, next thing you know is is things that you should be doing preparation season is um, planning your events, okay? Start looking at your events and planning your events. What are your touches going to look like around the events? What support help do you need to planning the events, making sure you're um, reserving the hall or you're reserving, if you're going to do Arbor Day or Recycling Day, you're reserving the shredding company or recycling companies and things like that, right? Um, next thing I got is working in your business, purifying your database. Um, I love birthdays right from the beginning. Whenever somebody was uh, closing with me, um, I got their birthdays and I got their anniversaries and I send out birthday cards and anniversary cards. What great touches as we old, get older. Some of us don't even get birthday cards anymore. Right. And so it's kind of nice to get a birthday card yep. from your agent. You know what a nice, easy touch that you're doing right there. But you got to purify your database. You got to make sure that you've got all their correct contact information. Their emails might change. They might have had a new job change. You should be getting on their social media and seeing what's happened. If they've got any new announcements in their social media, did their niece have a did they have a, a baby or did they take a new job or what things like that? Celebrate their their wins and losses uh, with them. Right. Um, so the, working in your business is really, really important. OK. And the last thing I kind of put on here is just update your sphere on market conditions, forecasts and stuff like that. I always do forecasts for our agents um, if they don't have the um, uh, time or um, uh, wherewithal to come up and do uh, their own market condition forecasts and things like that, I'm going to give that to them. Okay. So uh, I let them know this a couple weeks ago. Here's my forecast for 2024. 2024 is going to be an okay year. Okay. It's going to be much better than 2023. It's going to be much better than 2022. <clears throat> it is not going to be anywhere close to 2021. I absolutely unequivocally do not feel that we're going to be into that absolute 70, 80 offers, 75,000 over asking price um, because our interest rates are going to temper those down. The other thing we got to remember is Q4. 
Okay, we have an election coming up, and this is going to be a grind with this election, as we know. Um, this is going to be very negative. It's going to be a very, very negative campaigns, uh, oh. and that's going to affect a lot of All people. There's going to be a lot of division that's going to happen in our world, and that's going to affect our market. Uh, it always does. Uh, elections always affect the housing yeah. market. So we don't know what to expect in 2020 in Q4 of 2024. So, um, but I talk about that, so I let people know that you know this is like we were preaching all winter. Especially in Minnesota, with 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 the good weather, uh, our buyers should have already bought. Yep. The smartest thing they could have done is they should have already bought when they could have got in and maybe only competed up against two or three offers. Right? We're already starting to ramp up now. We're starting to see fifteen offers plus. Right? Um, so uh, forecasting that market conditions and let them know um, because what do they always ask you? What's how's your, the market? What, how's the market? You're, you're in a group of whoever, wherever you're at. They always want to know, how's the market, okay? They want to know. So tell them. Be proactive and tell them. So And if you don't know how the market is because you haven't done your research or homework, go back, watch episode, I believe it was two, where we talked about getting to know your market and being that market expert. Yeah. If you're not doing that and taking the time, that's part of working in your business. You have to learn all that stuff because you have to be able to tell people. This is what's going this on. This is what's going on, and this is what I forecast. Yep. You know, you're the expert. Um, Dave's working on a new, uh, some new tools that we're offering to our agents in. Um, um, different things are happening in the cities. You know, new developments, new parks, different things like that. So we can be those those neighborhood experts for for our clients. Right. So we're gonna button this up right now. Preparation season. I understand, guys. It's a grind. It's a grind for every single one of us. You know, my staff who are processing commissions and doing compliance and stuff like that are just like, we need more deals. We need more deals. And I'm just like, because you're looking outside and you're seeing it 60 <laughs> degrees and no snow. Okay. Yep. We're, we're, we're closing more transactions today than we did the last two years, this t- same time of year. So um, preparation season is, is if you're going to be successful in this industry, you got to welcome it. You got to engage it. You got to learn from it. Enjoy the grind. Okay. Enjoy the grind. It will pay off. If you don't do the grind right now, it's not going to be a great 2024 for you. That's my advice. Yep. And I 100% agree with that. If you don't do the grind, if you don't get in and actually do the work, you're going to have to start working another job. Yep. And you're going to take a part time job. Yeah. If you don't want to do that, then start working in this business because you can make your family wonderful if you actually work and do the job if you yep, do the grind so thanks everybody click subscribe click the little bell get notified of our next episode yep check out our flipping book link um and 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 if you want to find out more information about realty one group choice i'd love to sit down and talk with you if you would like to just uh bounce some questions off of me how do i do this how do i do that you don't need to join us just reach out to me all my contact information is here yep. see ya thanks